Hey guys, welcome to Toy Shop. Today we're cleaning a carburetor on a Yamaha Moto 4 200. First thing we want to do is get the carburetor off. Um, if you're unsure of that, I'll probably put this at the end of the video. So kind of fast forward to the end if you want to kind of see how I got it off. But get the carburetor off, we want to get it cleaned up first because you don't want any dirt to get from the outside to the inside while we're cleaning it. So I got this scrubbed up in the parts washer pretty decent. If you just got carburetor cleaner, that works pretty good. They sell that at Walmart. So, and an old toothbrush, that seems to get them pretty clean. So I've got the outside of this carburetor cleaned up. Um, everything we're gonna clean for the most part is underneath this bottom half here, the float bowl. So we're gonna get this broke loose. Now, if you're not really too sure what you're doing, the best advice I can give you is to be organized with all of this. The more organized you are, the better it's gonna be when you go to put it back together. Make sure you get a clean area to do it on. All right, I got all four bolts out. We're not gonna to touch this yet, but kind of wiggled it a little bit and pulled it apart. And oh my goodness, wow. This is probably one of the worst carburetors I have uh, had a part in, uh, in a couple of years. Sometimes these float bowls stick. So what you gotta do is, my screwdriver's kinda got a metal piece on the end. You can grab like a pair of pliers or something and just kinda tap it. And that'll kinda help get it broke free. Hopefully your carburetor does not look this bad. It doesn't take much to, for them to stop running. I'm gonna get some of this heavy stuff off of here with a rag first. What we're gonna do is start by getting this float pin out, which I just kinda pushed it through on one side so I could grab it with pliers on the other. And that should pop out. Now you've got your float and your needle. And set that off to the side. Now we've got our pilot jet in here. We're gonna get that broke free. There's your pilot jet. Now this up here is your main jet. It's got a flathead screw. It's supposed to have a flathead slot right there. That's to get the main jet out of the emulsifier tube, which is this hex piece down here. This carburetor is bad enough. I'm definitely gonna separate the two, but I've also had times on the carburetor where I didn't. So right now, if you look, they're coming out together. So I'm gonna grab a, a wrench and hold on to emuls the emulsion tube and break the main jet free. So that's what your main jet looks like. And we're gonna pull this emulsion tube out. There's an O-ring under this, under the hex part of this. This piece right here that's sticking up, that should get pushed down and come out of there. Cause that's gonna be held in there with the Emulsion tube. You want to be fairly gentle with this. Say that as I'm banging it against the bench, but there it is. All right, right now I just kind of have everything soaking in this float bowl with carburetor cleaner just because this was in such bad shape. Most of the time, just a good spray out with a carburetor cleaner and just a little bit of scraping works pretty good. All right, now on a carburetor, you have two sides. This side here, air goes in. This side here goes towards the motor and air and fuel mixture come out of this side. So that makes a this here, the fuel screw. If there was a screw that had a spring under it on this side of the carburetor somewhere, that would be an air screw. So we've got a fuel screw right here. Now this is this is backed out a certain number of turns so it runs good. So we need to find out how many turns backed out it is so we can reset that when we go to put this back together. So the only way to find that out is to screw it in until it stops screwing. One half of a turn, one turn, one and a half turns, two turns, Two and a half turns out is what we were. So I don't forget, I wrote it down right here on my rag. So now I know how many turns out that was. Now I'm gonna back this all the way out. We're gonna take this out. All right, so there's our fuel screw. Now way down in there, there should be some more parts. I'm just taking a little pick. There's an O-ring in there. That makes me nervous because fuel screws usually have a spring, a steel washer, and then an O-ring. And this literally just has an O-ring. So, so let's see if you can see this. All right, so this right here is our fuel screw. And then looks like there's a, 
a fuel screw, a spring, a washer, and an O-ring. And this is number 25. So if I scroll down here to 25, you can see this is what it's supposed to have in there. The fuel screw, the spring, the washer, and the O-ring. And it's going to go on in that order. So you're going to take your fuel screw, you're going to slide your spring over it, then you're going to take your steel washer and put that over the end, and then take your O-ring and put that on the end. The O-ring will kind of hold on to the end of it, so you'll be able to take and hold the whole assembly like this, and it won't fall apart because the O-ring's the last thing on there. So just remember that. I can't show you this right now. I'm going to end up ordering a kit, but we're going to finish this up so I can get you guys back on the trails. So just know that that's how that goes back together. And I apologize for not being able to show you that. So now that we got that out of there, I'm gonna pull this Phillips head screw out so that we can get the seat out and get that cleaned up. Now if you look, there's another little clamp under here that was also held by that screw. Now this seat will come out of here, but there's an O-ring in there that's holding it in. And if your carburetor is as bad as mine, you can just take your fingers and wiggle it out. But sometimes what you got to do is gently, very gently come in here with some pliers and kind of start working it and get it to pop out that way. So hopefully your guys is in better shape than mine and you'll actually have to try a little harder to get that out. Now this gasket, if the gasket doesn't look terrible, I would not try to take it off. I would try to leave it there. We'll get it cleaned up and you'll be able to put it back together without any issue. Now, this screw right here is your idle screw. If you look down in the throat of the carb, kind of about where my finger is, there's that little bulb sticking out. That's the end of this screw. And that controls how high your slide is. So we're not gonna touch this screw at all because nothing flows through this passageway, so we're good. And then this flat head right here just pokes its head out in here. I don't think it has any actual purpose. So we're going to just leave that in there. So now this carburetor is completely tore apart. We're gonna take carburetor cleaner and we're just gonna start spraying everything out. If yours looks as bad as mine, I'm gonna have to do a lot of scrubbing on this to get it cleaned up. But a lot of times what I'll do is I'll kind of spray it out with carburetor cleaner take a flathead screwdriver and kind of go in there and just scrape any of the heavy stuff off that might be in there and then spray it out some more. I usually do it over top of a garbage can. So that's that. All right, let's start getting this stuff cleaned up. Carburetor cleaner over the garbage can and I'm just sticking this in here and then just holding it and spraying it. Stuff it in this hole, spray it. Kind of spray out this big hole right here. Make sure you spray out where the seat is Spray inside both of these bungs on the outside. Spray in here where the, the choke cable goes in. Wouldn't hurt to spray this way. I don't know if I can get this on camera, but all right, you see the blue where the, net, the rag is? On just this side of that hole where the nuts are, there's a little teeny tiny hole down in there, which is gonna be somewhere in there. You can kind of see my fingertip. So if you look straight down in there, there's a little teeny tiny hole. Make sure you blow that out and it's good and clean. But um, spray in all these ports here, pretty much any orifice you can find on this carburetor body, like that one right there, spray in there. So try to spray everything out super good. There's looks like there's some orifices right there. So get in there, get everything sprayed out pretty good. All this white crusty stuff, I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver, kind of start trying to scape that away. All right, I'm gonna finish getting this cleaned up and then I'll show you a little more on cleaning up the jets. So I've got a lot of this cleaned up now. This carburetor bowl was absolutely disgusting. I might get one out of every 75 carbs or probably this bad. I guess it depends on what kind of junk you're into. Um, sometimes I get some stuff in that's really bad like this, but I scrubbed it as good as I could and it still wasn't good enough for me. So I stuck this in sandblaster and shot some sprayed out in here a little bit to just get it cleaned up. So I do have the football cleaned up now. I took the float itself and sprayed some carburetor cleaner on a rag and wiped that off. I've got these uh, these metal pieces cleaned up and I've got all my jets cleaned up. Um, I like to use, this is just an electric die grinder, but this is a super fine wire wheel, but I'll post the link for this wire wheel in the description. This works super good for cleaning up this fine brass pieces and it kind of gives it a good polish. But 
So I've got everything on the outside cleaned up really good and I've sprayed out the inside of everything. It looks pretty decent. Now what you wanna do is, I don't know if I can get you to see that, but you wanna be able to look through all of these holes in all of these different jets. So like there's two, four, six, there's eight holes in the end of this and you need to be able to look down through it in your pilot jet. Your main jet has a great big hole down through the center. Your motion tube's got a whole bunch of holes along the side and then it's got a hole down through the center. Now, the best way to do this so you know you actually have it clean is to try to have pieces of wire laying around because like for this pilot jet here, there's some bigger holes right here in the side. I wanna take a piece of wire and I just wanna stick through it just to make sure that it's clean and it's, it's open. So stick that through all of it. Now there's a hole down through the, side, the center of these and my bigger pieces of wire here don't fit in there, but this little teeny tiny guy right here, I don't know how well you can see that. This is actually from a wire brush, like from a, a welding wire brush, just a clean slag off of whatever you weld. I just cut one single strand of wire off of it and it's kind of short because it's just the way it is. So I've got a pair of pliers right here and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna stick it in the end kind of roll the jet around till I feel it actually go in. There we go. So now I've actually shoved wire through this. If for some reason you don't have access to wire or something like that, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna have pretty decent eyesight to begin with, but you wanna look straight down through it and you're gonna see, shine it up against something that's light colored so you can see through it and make sure that the hole that's through it looks actually circular. You don't want it to look all jaggedy and stuff or barely be able to see any light through it. You wanna be able to see a crisp circular hole through it. Um, something you don't wanna do is they make itty bitty tiny drill bits for like cleaning out torch tips and stuff. You don't wanna remove any material. So a piece of wire you can just push through, but a drill bit you might actually open the jet up and it won't make it run correctly. So don't try to remove any material, just make sure you all the holes are open. So that's the pilot jet. The main jet you should be able to look down through, which I haven't cleaned this yet. All I did was clean up the outside of all of this, but that's, the more important thing is cleaning up the holes. The outside can look a little bit ugly. As long as the holes are cleaned up, that's all that really matters. So, because fuel has to flow through these, so you can't have these holes plugged up or else this does no good. All right, other than that, make sure all these holes are all cleaned up. One thing I noticed while I was doing this is the tip of this needle here. I don't know how well you can see that. I don't know if the camera is gonna pick it up or not. So I drew you guys a fancy picture. All right. So this is what my needle looks like right now. It's kind of got this weird step in the rubber tip and it's not supposed to look like that. A brand new one's got a nice crisp clean V in it and that will help it seal in the bottom of the seat here. So because it's got that weird curved in tip, it is not any good. All of the rubber on this particular carburetor is completely shot. We're gonna, I'm gonna reassemble it for you guys just so you guys can see it, but I'm gonna put a new carburetor kit in this. I've gotta get all new O-rings and stuff. Now for the seat, the best way to clean the seat is to actually pull it out like this if it's a removable seat, which this one is, and then take some steel wool. If you don't have steel wool, maybe a piece of Scotch-Brite maybe, but this one I've wadded up a couple times. You just wanna kinda get it in here get it started and keep shoving it forward. This is gonna kind of like, essentially like wire brush the inside of it to get a good polish in it so that it's good and clean and that your needle and seat will seal off completely so that you don't have any gas leaking out. So you can kind of see it's starting to shine up the top of there. And I wanna keep doing this all the way down to the bottom because the bottom of the seat is the most critical. Give her a couple more twirls. All right. So now that we've got this cleaned out, I'm gonna respray it off a carburetor cleaner and make sure it's good and clean. Now, just I just did that over top of these jets, so I'm gonna re-clean these jets here. All right, so in essence, for this video, all of these are clean and the float bowl's clean and my carburetor body's clean. This white stuff is pretty difficult to get off. We're just gonna hope that none of that falls off. All right, let's start putting this together. All right, so we're gonna take our seat 
And we're gonna start by dropping that down in there. Probably have to push it down in there to get it in there and seated. Now we're gonna take our little hold down and you might be able to tell which way it was in there last time. We're gonna stick that in there over top of that seat. And then this metal plate went on here. All right, now that Phillips head screw held all of that together. So carefully screw that in there. All right, now the next thing I wanna do is take my emulsion tube and make sure that O-ring under there is, is healthy. Oh wait, nope, we're not doing that first. We're taking this little, little piece we forgot about the first time. Now, if you look at it, one side's got a, a little chamfer or a taper on the inside, and the other side's big and thick. The big and thick side is going to go up while the carburetor's upside down. This side here has a chamfer on it to help accept the needle as the needle's coming back down into this. So we're going to put that in the bottom with the big bulky side up top. Just kind of drop that down in there. Kind of wiggle it. Get it down in there. Now we're gonna take our emulsion tube, kind of push it down in there, get this started. Now as we're tightening this up, that center piece should kind of start poking out more. All right, now I'm gonna snug this up a little bit. Take our main jet that looks like this. We're gonna thread that in the top here. Now all these are made out of brass, so they're soft. So you could peel the threads right off of this without too, too much effort. But you wanna make sure it's snug. All right, now we got our pilot jet. Our pilot jet's gonna go in the hole on the boss right next to the main jet. We're gonna run this one in until it gets tight. Snug it up. All right, um, I've got a, a fuel screw example here because this is what yours should look like. If I were to pull these off in order, the O-ring would come off first and then the steel washer would come off second and then the spring would come off third. So as you assemble this, you're gonna put the spring on first, then you're gonna put the steel washer on and then you're gonna take this O-ring and slide the O-ring over the end last. Now, technically that should hold it all together because that O-ring should hold on to this shoulder up in here. But this is just an example one because mine's missing all the pieces. So we're just gonna have my demo one. All right, we're gonna get this started in this hole here. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna run it in until it gets snug. All right, so it's snug right there. You kind of see how the flat head is at an angle like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it back out two and a half turns. So we're here, we're gonna go one half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half turns. So we're gonna leave it roughly in there. That should be good enough to get us, get us running. All right, so that's pretty much everything inside. Now we are going to get the float and the needle back in. So there's that little hoop on top of the needle and that goes on this stem here. Now, if you don't remember which way it goes, there should be kind of a little witness mark right there, a little, a little round dot where the little spring-loaded tip here road should go in this way. So, as long as it doesn't fall apart, it should look like that. All right, now I'm gonna kinda carefully start the needle in the seat. I'm not gonna let go. I'm gonna take my pin, start it here in the hole, push it through. All right, now that that's through all the way, then we're just gonna put our 
our foot bolt back on. Get our four screws in there. Put those in, get them tightened up, and then we have a completely clean carburetor. And then just do the opposite steps that you did to get it apart, and then you should be back in business. All right, so we got the plastics off right here. We got the gas tank off. Pop off the fuel line, and then there's a vent line here we're gonna pop off. This vent line gets routed up the frame. I'm probably just gonna tuck this out of the way for now just so it doesn't get lost. Set the throttle cable and slide up there with it. I'm gonna pull this air box boot kind of down out of the way. Now it looks like these are just studs in the carb body. So we're gonna take and break these nuts loose. And, uh, oh, we got the choke cable here too. All right, we're gonna turn the choke on. Now it'll kind of help hold the plunger on that so it doesn't spring apart and get lost. I'm gonna tuck that up there too.